Welcome to Home Business TV. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Kapmenderson, your host, Efficiency Bitch. There, I said it. But before you think I'm bad-mouthing today's guest, Melissa Leone, note that she is the author of Efficiency Bitch, How Ambitious Women Can Have It All Without Doing It All. She uses the letters B-I-T-C-H as an, an acronym to define the five areas she focuses on to live the life she designed. Bank, inbox, time, connection, and harmony. So greetings, Melissa Leon. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Please say hello. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me today. It's nice to be here. So you trademarked efficiency, bitch. I did. <laughs> I did. I used it in a speech once, and I had yeah. such amazing reaction. Uh, being the EV that I am, I, I ran out and trademarked it, and it's been an incredible ride ever since. <laughs> cool. Well, I first saw that. I, I was looking up the title of the book. I was like, whoa, there's a TM next to it. This is serious. <laughs> so you're, yeah, uh, you're I don't mess in. around. You're calling in from the Phoenix area today? That's right. I'm in Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. A uh, growing entrepreneurial hub. Well, uh, thanks for thanks for connecting in, and let's get to know you better. Melissa Leone is a 20-year corporate finance professional, a mother of three, an author, a small business owner, and lover of, as she says, having it all, having her cake, and eating it too. Melissa is the owner of Two Cents Consulting as its CFO. Melissa Leone, talk with us about how you balance life between work and family. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I actually don't believe balance exists. Um, balance indicates that all parts are equal. And for me, it's more about all parts in agreement. Uh, I learned this the hard way through 20 years in the corporate world. Uh, I left to, to start my own company and, and, as you said, have children to go along with it, an author and a podcast host, and there's a lot to go with it. And what I realized is that all parts can't be equal, um, but I do need to work in all parts in agreement. So I've, I've I like learned that. to all pivot. All parts in agreement. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. And oh. I tried to balance. Balance just almost killed me. Uh, it was the, when I realized it was about harmony and agreement, that's when things really started to change. Well, let's jump right into the heart of B-I-T-C-H. I'm having trouble saying that word again. <laughs> Melissa, what is the recipe to having your cake and eating it too? Uh, falling in love with your future self, uh, finding ways to make your future self, and that could be tomorrow, that could be next week, that could be five years from now. Finding ways to help your future self be as happy as possible is how I've uncovered my secret success in into having my cake and eating it too. Hello, well, Melissa, what, what tips do you have for women to better manage money and personal mm -hmm. finances? Well, I've been in finance for a long time. Uh, my first job as a 16 year old was as a bank teller. Uh, I spent a long time in corporate finance and now I own a fractional CFO business. And what we do is help small business owners manage their time and money. Um, the biggest piece that I can say as a tip for anyone listening is to know where you're spending your money. Uh, categorizing expenses it, through a profit and loss statement on your in your business or in your personal life is really where the magic is. Most people mm -hmm. I speak to know how much money they make. They'll say, I make $15 an hour or I make $50,000 a year or my business grossed $250,000 right. last year. It, you can bring in millions of dollars a year and still be broke because yeah, you tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you it's mentioned sad. a good term. I always recommend people to sort of do their own bookkeeping. Uh, you know, it's so easy to do a QuickBook. Let an accountant hand your, handle your taxes. But, uh, you know, the amount of time it takes to automate just so you kind of know where you're at. Um, you know, that's what I do. Yeah, I, I love QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online is the only product that I recommend to small business owners. Um, I do find most small business owners struggle with their bookkeeping. They put it off. It's not something that they're interested in doing. And I do advocate for people using their profit and loss statement and their balance sheet as tools to run their business. And if you're not keeping up with those items, it can be very difficult to, impossible to read a report that doesn't exist. You might be working um, for free and you don't even know it. <laughs> and, and it happens all the time. I tell people, you have a hobby here, not a business, I if you're not maintaining. Yeah. I, I 
I think financial literacy for business owners is, is the most important thing to understand so that you're not having a hobby or working for free. Um, and reading those reports is, is important. I, I suggest that everyone has a bookkeeper, a CPA or a tax preparer and a CFO. Now you may have the skill set yourself to be your own bookkeeper, but you need to have one and you need to make yourself wear that hat every mm -hmm. month. Um, or be your own CFO. And yeah, if you're just working and seeing, if you're just working and seeing checks coming in, you know, you may just lose, you might lose track that there's more expenses going out, and yeah. you know, it's easy to get lulled into complacency. Yeah, and keep it simple, right? I I find a lot of people are, uh, particularly small business owners, are interested in whatever will make it fast, but really, right. what you're looking for is simple. Um, I know a lot of people read profit first and follow the methodology. I've also been in this business long enough to see a lot of people fail with profit first because they don't, it's not yeah. simple enough for them to follow. So there's not one right answer for everyone, but find that right answer and stick with it. I know that it's a, it it's, know that it's something you need to focus on. It just don't, don't yeah. assume that the profit, you know, is there. Let's kind of move it on to uh, time. Melissa, how can a female entrepreneur better manage her time and what, you call her inbox of life. Yeah, I mean, what goes in must go out in a lot of these, in a lot of tasks of life. And that could be um, taking care of your home or your car or your business or your children. Um, To-do lists are, are certainly something that I ha always recommend. Always mostly, a good thing. <laughs> yeah, mostly because the dopamine hit that you get from crossing it off is, is fantastic. Um, but your memory will will disappoint you more often than it impresses you. Particularly the older we get, the more responsibilities that we have. It's just not possible to hold that information in. So write it down, take a picture, do whatever you need to do in order to make sure you don't forget it. Um, I'm a big believer in calendars and making sure that everything is is organized in a singular place. I think what I happens if you get away from staying organized like that on time management, looking at it each day, you focus on what's urgent by what's important. Yeah. I, I don't know what your what your thoughts are on that, where, you know, the phone rings or the email comes in and suddenly half the day is over and you didn't get to that income producing project that uh, you, you, you've had on your shelf forever. Spot on. And I'd say, you know, if we go back to the previous comment about being your own bookkeeper, it has that's important and it has to be done. But it's really easy to make that second thing on your list when the, when there's a fire alarm going off with a with a customer. So finding those to-do lists, I have to get my bookkeeping done today. It can't wait till tomorrow. Um, getting those types of things organized for yourself is really important. My other tip would be outsource it. Um, if there's something that you constantly avoid, outsource those items. I just got off the phone with a client who runs short-term rentals and he just recently outsourced his answering service and it's saved his life. He no well, longer he was has answering his own about. phone. <laughs> well, he's got, you know, 10 rental properties. And oh, so he okay. was trying to answer them all himself. And, yeah. you know, he was telling me, I have these phantom phone calls. Like he'll hear the phone ring, but it's not really ringing, but he's been programmed to, right. to anticipate. So no matter what your business is coming up with thoughts of, how can I make this simpler for myself tomorrow? Outsourcing those items. It's so, so easy to outsource focus. with all those platforms and put it, you know, find what you're looking for. I think the thing is thinking it through and how you, what you can outsource so you can communicate that intelligently to an out to somebody who would outsource. Yeah, and pick your vendors wisely. Uh, not all vendors are created equal. Uh, yeah. uh, they don't they don't all do the same thing and. My tip for outsourcing would be make sure that you are your vendor's ideal client. If you are smaller than they like to work with, you probably won't get the attention you need. If you're too big, they might right. they may not be able to handle you. So finding the client where you are their ideal is important and shop around for that. You will be able to find a vendor that fits your size, your niche, your market, so Always. I hear from that, you, you've you got a key criteria of, of your size of your business and making sure that fits the vendor as, yeah. uh, as a key thing. Interesting. Um, yeah. You also highlight the the uh, the importance of a strong village, like that term. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you mean by a strong village? 
Surrounding yourself with the right people. I, I firmly believe that you become the average of the people you spend the most time with. And I've done it myself where I've spent time with people who are holding me back or worse, bringing me down. And I have found that surrounding myself with people who already have what I want is going to help me get there faster. Um, that's in my personal life. I really take that seriously, yeah. um, who I spend my time with, who I allow into my into my village. But also at work and in my business, I my recommendation is always hire slow, fire fast. Uh, if you start to have those red flags, those feelings that this is not the right fit, it's okay to move on quickly. It probably isn't working for them either. And making those decisions- Hire slow, really fire help. fast. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically do your due diligence carefully, but trust, and then, it, then you move into trusting your instincts. And yes. that if, if something's telling you it's not right, then don't, uh, you know, don't invest any more time in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's listen. The bigger challenge for so many women in business is, you know, working that business around raising kids. Mm -hmm. Listen, is there any secret sauce to balancing business and kids, family? It's like getting help um, is always something that that I advocate for everyone. Um, a lot of women I speak to think asking or hiring for a housekeeper is too bougie. They they feel like that's something that only wealthy people do. Um, and, and I'm here to say, I, I think it's something busy people do. Asking for help, hiring help, domestic help in particular, has saved me both professionally and personally. Um, you know, everyone's circumstances are different. Some people live in giant homes. Some people live in trailers. Some people live in condos in the city, some out in the fields and the farms. And finding that help with whatever you can find, um, whether it's watching children, going to the grocery store, folding laundry. Um, I, I believe in supporting other people's business, which is what that would be doing. You would be hiring somebody to support you. Um, they have the ability to charge a fair wage. You have the ability to negotiate that rate if necessary. Um, not taking advantage of anyone. It's just about hiring folks that can help you run your life better. My children are small. Uh, my kids are eight, 10 and 12. Uh, my husband works full time. I work full time and I, we could not do it without support. Yeah. You know, I think one way of looking at it is you got to look at what your value of time is. And hopefully mm -hmm. if you're running your own business and an expertise, it's worth, it's more than what that hourly rate would be for shopping, house, yeah. house cleaning, mm -hmm. raising kids. And so you're in a way using your time since we all have the same amount of time. Um, yeah, and if you're running a business, you're offering a service. You want people to buy your service. <laughs> yeah. it, it's the same thing. You need to buy other services so that you can better support the people you serve. Um, well, that's a good I, way of I, looking at it too. You're giving back also. Yeah, I've tried to wear all those hats and I'm not very good at some of them. So no, they I don't, take I'm me... not good with a vacuum. <laughs> it's just, it'll just well, yeah, up it just... It'll, it'll, uh, I'll end up looking like a hoarder after a while. So <laughs> I've got to. <laughs> it just depends on what your skill set is. I mean, we talked about bookkeeping earlier. Some people right. are great at it and do it. Some people are terrible at it. Some people love social media. Some people are terrible at it. Um, there's so many different areas of, of any business that can be, that can be looked at, um, in order to support you and, and, better value your time. I, I'd say outsourcing right. is how you leverage time in order to get more done. And that's that's been secret sauce for me for, for years is finding finding ways to work smarter. Got a good point. Melissa, overall, what additional advice can you share with anyone on balancing um, these multiple roles we've been talking around in life? Do you have any additional, um, anything you can share? Yeah, I do. I'd say take one thing at a time. It can be really hard to, re to read a book like mine or to listen to a podcast like this with all these ideas and you want to implement everything at once. Um, you can't eat the elephant all at one time, as the old, the old adage says, one bite at a time. So come up with one thing you heard today that you can make simple for tomorrow and then do it again tomorrow and then do it again tomorrow. And 
and try to always be taking one action each day to make your future self better. You just read my mind on my next question. <laughs> As we head towards <laughs> wrapping up the podcast, what is one thing a listener can do tomorrow morning to start being his or her own efficiency bitch? Yeah, I'd say tomorrow morning, uh, get up early. I, I am a big believer that uh, efficiency is born in the morning. So go to bed early tonight. There's a lot of power in that. You'll be able to take control of your evenings by telling yourself to go to bed early. Get up early tomorrow morning, write your to-do list. You will be shocked at the amount of things that you can get done. Um, I'd also say not just your to-do list for tomorrow, but write down the list of things that are on your mind that may get done tomorrow. They may get done next month, but at least you have that that list handy and you can work through it. And then, of course, go buy Efficiency Bitch and you'll learn all my tips and tricks all the around. <laughs> yeah, if they ask you about it, say it is trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, it is. Melissa Leon, this has been a great discussion on a new way of looking at an age old challenge. Do you have any final points you'd like to share? You know, I think there's always room for improvement. Everyone has opportunities to improve, um, myself included. And I think that's one of the beauties of being human is that we can continue to learn new things every day to better our lives. Well put. Melissa Leone, thank you for joining us today on the Home Business Podcast. Thanks for having me. To learn more about Melissa Leone and her business, please visit twocentsconsulting.com. That's T-W-O-S-E-N-S-E -S -E, consulting.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or the website homebusinessmag.com. Subscribe to the newsletter, read the Home-Based Business Startup Guide. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Captain Anderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based efficiency bitch day. Thank you for watching Home Business TV.